This is a tip today, especially for diesel pusher RVs. The kind of RVs that use their own air system to put air in their tires. Larger, heavier RVs often need fairly high pressure in the front tire. Sometimes as much as 110, 115 or more pounds. But your air compressor on the RV only goes up to 120. So how many times have you tried to put air in your tires from your compressor only to have air leak out instead? If you try to put air into your tires as your air gauge is on the downstroke, on its way back down toward 90 pounds, and you need 110 pounds in your tire, you're actually going to remove air from your tires. Today we're gonna to show you how to create a simple device to solve that problem permanently. To use your coach's air system to put air in your tires, obviously you first have to locate the line that comes from the air system. And here it is right here under the hood of our coach. Since this connection is also used by tow trucks to provide air to your air system in the event your coach needs to be towed, you'll probably find your connection in the same spot. Okay, we're gonna take the quick connector on our 50-foot airline and plug it into the front of the coach. Now, if you don't have one of these air hoses, you're gonna to have to determine what type of connector your coach has. There are a lot of different types of quick connects and you have to have the exact match for whatever is on your RV. On our motorhome, it was easy to figure out exactly which connector to purchase because there's a sample right here that came from the factory zip tied to the hose. And that's there so that if a tow truck driver should need to attach air to your coach to tow it, he is guaranteed to have the right connector there. You might have that too. Take a look. And when you hook this up, you want to be very careful since there's high pressure air in the system. Make sure that you have a good grip on the hose so that it doesn't kick out and hit you if it should fail to lock on your first try. Okay, we're all connected in the front and this hose is plenty long enough to reach all the tires. Now you're gonna need a good quality digital air gauge. This one's a little fancier than most. It's made by AccuTire. We've also made life easy by fitting these special caps to our valve stems that don't require removal to check air. Now before you know what pressure to put in your tires, you need to get your coach weighed and ideally you need corner weights. And if you have a tag axle unit, you need position weights. So we have six weights for our motorhome. We have right and left front tires, right and left duals, and right and left tag axle. So we had the coach weighed at the Newmar factory when we were there. It can be done a lot of different places, but it's important that you know the weight of each position. You don't need to know the weight of each individual tire on the duels, just that position, the two of them. So we need six weights. Uh, coach without a tag axle needs four corner weights. Getting corner weights can also help you identify if you have your coach loaded poorly. Way too much weight on one side versus the other. So check the specs for your chassis or your RV and try to have the RV balanced as much as reasonably possible left to right. Now based on our front corner weights, we have calculated based on Michelin's tire guide, based on their chart, that our front tires should have between 105 and 110 pounds in them. We keep them right in the middle at 107 and a half. So let's take a quick look and see where they are. We're currently at 105 and we want 107 and a half. So let's just go ahead and fire up the RV. So we have the RV fired up and on fast idle, we're gonna take our airline here. And this is a nice one that just stays right on there. And we're gonna hook it up while the compressor is running and put some air in the tire. Now I only need two and a half pounds. So I'm not gonna keep it on there very long. So I've had that on there for about a minute or two, minute and a half. Let's take it off. And now we're showing 104. It let air out. Now why did that happen? Well, here's why. It's because your air compressor is designed 
to go up and down between 90 and 120 pounds. That's a normal operating condition for it. It's not always above your tire pressure. Sometimes during the cycle, it's below your tire pressure. So what happened there is real simple. I tried to put air in the tire while it was below 107 and a half pounds, actually below 105 pounds. And that let air out instead of putting air in. This is particularly a problem if you have high pressure requirements. If your tires need to carry 115 to 120 pounds of pressure, this is a common problem for you, and you've probably experienced this before. We're going to show you how to build a simple, inexpensive device to solve this problem and make putting air in the tires a breeze. Now you may have noticed that our air chuck has a quick release on it. It's not permanently attached to the hose. Now there's a reason for that because we're going to take off that air chuck and add in a device that we built with parts from our local home improvement store. And here's how this works. We are going to add our own air gauge into the line. And the way we put this together was by getting the correct quick release for this end of the air hose and purchasing the correct parts to make a T in the line leading to another quick connect. That quick connect is going to go right into our tire air chuck and the T that comes off here goes into typical air gauge. When we assemble it, this is what it looks like. And this is what we're going to use to put air in our tires now. now. You'll notice that the reading on the gauge right now is 110 pounds. That's exactly what the coach pressure is, 110 pounds. We've taken this airline and made it part of our air system by connecting it right to the coach's airline. Now we know what the pressure is in the coach's air system. To demonstrate how this works, I'm sitting in the driver's seat with the engine idling looking at our front air gauge. Now, unfortunately, we have air gauges that are very poorly marked, not particularly easy to tell exactly where you are, but it will give you an idea. I'm also holding in here the air gauge hooked up to the air outlet on the front of the coach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin pumping the brakes to bring the air level down and you're going to see the gauge is beginning to drop. Same thing's happening over here. As the compressor begins to bring the air pressure up, this gauge is now acting exactly like an air pressure gauge on your RV, only because it's very well marked, we can see exactly what our pressure is. Now, of course, your compressor is going to finish its task at 120 or so, and you're going to hear it as the compressor blows off the air in the back. There it is. Now, of course, normal cycle, the pressure is going to continue to slowly move back down. It's a normal cycle for the air pressure to fluctuate back and forth, back and forth between 90 and 120. And if that pressure is below the pressure you need in your front tires particularly, Rear tires don't require as much air. It's the front tires that require the most. If you try to put air into your RV and you need 120 pounds, you can already see on the gauge, you're going to let air out, not put it in. So let's put this to use and show you how we do it. Now this is where having a helper is really very important. We're looking at the gauge now and we're at 110. If I try and put air in right now, there is barely enough pressure in the system to get me the 107 and a half pounds per square inch that I want. So rather than sit here and wait for the compressor to engage, to come back up to 120 pounds, have your helper pump the brakes until you get down to 90 pounds. That will engage the compressor. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now we're going to put it back in fast idle. You can already see how quickly this is on the upswing. And now is where you want to use your airline. 
You're coming up past 100 pounds, but we're not ready yet. We're just going to stand here and not put air in the tire yet. We want to start putting air in the tire when we cross whatever level the tires are currently at, 105, and there it is. And I can let go of that and walk away because it stays on there real nicely. It's a good foot. But here's what I want to watch. I'm watching the air gauge climb. Now it's at 115. Coming up toward 120. I know that air is going into the tire because the pressure is higher than the pressure in the tire. Once it passes 120, you're going to hear that compressor kick out in the back. As long as I'm above 105, I know air is going into the tire, not out. There it is. The compressor kicked out. And now you're going to see the needle begin to go down. Well, I can safely leave this air chuck on the tire until I reach my desired level of 107 and a half. If I keep it on there longer than that, it will start taking air out of the tire. So now let's take this off and check our pressure. Sure enough, we've got 111 pounds. Now I didn't need to keep that chuck on there that long. I knew that I didn't need that much time to go from 105 to 107 and a half. I just wanted to demonstrate how being able to see what the pressure is in your air system live as it's happening right at the wheel allows you to make sure that you put air into your tire, not take it out. Now I'm just gonna let air out of the tire back down to 107 and a half. And of course it's always a lot easier to let air out than it is to put it in. If you look at this closely, you can see it's made up of the male quick release, a T that goes out to the air gauge, the air gauge itself threaded into the T, and one last connector here that takes the T and puts it into the female side of another quick release. That's really all you need. Piece it together from one end to the other, see what they have available at your local hardware or home improvement store, and this is a great thing to have. So go to your local Lowe's or Home Depot or Rona if you're in Canada. This hose actually came from Napa. Also get some plumber's pipe tape. You can see those white bands on there. All those pieces are put together with pipe tape. The rear tires usually aren't as difficult to get air into since they normally run lower pressure. There are more of them and less weight on each tire. We run 85 in our duals and 80 in our tag axle which is exactly according to the Michelin tire chart for the weights that we carry on those tires. It's a simple T with a female quick release on one end and a male quick release on the other. Put in your airline and you can stop the headache of letting air out of your tires when you meant to put it in.